In this video, we're going to be solving the simplest of algebraic problems, which are one-step equations. Okay? And a one-step equation means there is just one step to solving it. Now, uh, this is algebra. And when solving algebraic problems, there is one rule that is more important than any other rule. And that rule is, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must also do to the other side of the equation. You can think of an algebraic equation as being something like a seesaw. You put a kid on one side of the seesaw, you better put another kid on the other side of the seesaw to keep it uh, in balance. Not only that, those kids better be pretty much the same size, otherwise it's going to get out of balance. The exact same thing is true here. So, the best way to solve this equation is to look at our unknown, A in this case, and to say, what is happening to A? Okay, there's some number, I don't know what it is yet, so I'm just going to call it A. There's some number that when you multiply it times two-thirds, you get 24. So how am I going to uncover this? Well, what you have to do is, you undo the process. Just like when I am, uh, uh, after, if, in order to undo putting on my socks, I take off my socks. In order to undo wrapping up a present, I unwrap the present. Well, here I have to undo what's happening here. And the way that you undo multiplication is division. So that means I'm going to divide this side of my equation by two-thirds. I'm going to divide this side of my equation by two-thirds. Now, what does it mean to divide by two-thirds? As we remember, division just means multiplication times the reciprocal. The reciprocal of two-thirds being three-halves. So that means I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to multiply it times three-halves over here and times three-halves over here. Over here, my uh, fractions simplify very nicely to get 1 over 1 times a, which is just a. And over here I have, hmm, whole number times fraction. Well, let's see, I know how to do this. I'll put the whole number over 1. And now, life really gets easier if you simplify before you multiply cross. You can multiply cross first if you'd like to, but then you're dealing with bigger numbers, and frankly, I prefer to work with smaller numbers. So, let me, check, let me uh, look at my 24 over 2, and that's the same thing as 12 over 1. So now I have 12 times 3, which is 36, over 1 times 1, which is 1. So that means my answer is A equals 36. It's always a good idea when you finish these problems to take your A, take the value for A, put it back in the original equation, and make sure, does this really work? Well, let's see. 2 thirds times 36, I'll write that as 36 over 1, equals 36 over 3, I know what that is, that's 12 over 1, and I end up with 2 times 12, which is 24, over 1 times 1, which is 1, and 24 over 1 is just 24. So yes, it works, 24 equals 24. Alright, that's the first one. Now let's look at the next one. Next problem, we have 3 fourths plus x equals 1 and a 6. Oh my goodness, fractions. Okay, well, let's look at what's happening. What is happening to x? What is happening to my unknown? I'm adding 3 fourths to it. So how am I going to solve this? I'm going to subtract 3 fourths from the left side and also from the right side of my equation. On the left, 3 fourths minus 3 fourths is 0, plus x gives me x. On the right, I've got fractions to deal with. Now, if subtracting fractions is your problem, then you need to look back at unit zero preliminaries and you need to do some catching up, okay? Uh, but let's just remember how to do it right here. Uh, in order to subtract fractions, that means I need to find a common denominator. The lowest common de denominator for six and four would be, I'm thinking, 12. So this means this is gonna be one and two twelfths minus, uh, let's see, for twelfths, four times three is 12, so three times three is nine, okay? Now I got another problem. I can't take 9 from 2. So I have to rename this again. And I'm going to have to turn it into an improper fraction, I guess, because I'm going to have to borrow 1 from right here. 1 times 12 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So that means I have 14 twelfths minus 9 twelfths. That I know how to do. 14 minus 9 is 5, and I keep the same denominator, 12. So I have x equals 5 twelfths. Again, let's stick this answer, let's replace x with this answer here, and uh, see if, uh, if this works. 
3 fourths, like I said, I can call that 9 twelfths plus 5 twelfths equals 14 twelfths, which is 7 over 6 when I simplify the fraction, which is 1 and 1 sixth, and that's exactly what I wanted. So yes, that works. Okay? Moving over to number 3. What's happening to my unknown? That's always the way you should start these problems. What's happening to the unknown? Well, in this case, uh, what's happening to the unknown is it's being divided by negative 3. So how do we solve this? We do the opposite. We do the inverse operation, which is you multiply times negative 3. All right, so that means I'm going to, let me just erase this. I'm going to multiply this by negative 3, and I'm going to multiply this times negative 3. Over on this side, I can simplify my fractions here, and I get w over 1, which is just w, equals 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Lots of people are going to miss this problem, okay? Lots of people are going to look at this and they're going to say, ah, w over negative 3 is 9. I know the answer is negative 3 because I just divide 9 by negative 3. That's not right, though. And the way that you can tell that's not right is take your answer and replace the unknown with that answer at the end. If I, if I plug in negative 3 for w here, I'll get negative 3 over negative 3, which is 1. It is not 9. So instead, let me replace w with negative 27. Negative 27 over negative 3. Negative over negative is positive. 27 over 3 is 9. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right? Last one. This time, what's happening to my unknown? I'm subtracting 17. So what am I going to do to solve this? I'm going to add 17. You always do the inverse operation. Okay? n minus 17 plus 17, those things just cancel each other out, and I get n equals, okay? Nine, minus 17 plus 17 is like adding 0. Negative 5 plus 17 is, careful with those positives and negatives. Negative 5 plus 17 is just like saying 17 minus 5, which is 12, and n equals 12. Plug it in, and I get 12 minus 17. Little number minus big number is negative number, so I know my answer is negative. And 17 minus 12 is 5, so that means 12 minus 17 is negative 5. And sure enough, that's what I was looking for. All right? So basically, what you got to do is you have to look at what's happening to the unknown. You have to do the inverse operation. And then whatever you do to one side of the, of the equation, you have to do the other side of the equation. And you're all set with one-step equations.